God governs the earth through the Son, through the office of the Christ, through the anointed, by anointing. And this anointing, and which is the office of the anointed, has three dimensions, the prophetic, the kingly, and then the priestly. So the priest, the king, the prophet. All of these three are constituted by anointing. The kings anointed into kingship in the Bible. The priests anointed into priesthood in the Bible. And the prophets anointed into the prophetic in the Bible. And these three dimensions of the anointed constitute the office of the Christ on earth. That's what we have been trying to look at. That whoever God met and appointed to do something of his administration and government on earth, that person had to necessarily, according to the revelation of the scripture, had to necessarily manifest as a prophet. Necessarily. A prophet being somebody anointed by God as a result of which he will become an inspired vessel. So the, the prophet is the, an inspired vessel of Yahweh. One inspired with utterances to speak God's word. One inspired with actions that become the acts of God, the move, the work of God. One inspired, inspired with utterances, with thoughts, with gestures, with actions. So there are prophetic gestures. There are prophetic actions. There are prophetic signs. There are prophetic utterances. When we talk about the prophetic, it's large. There is the dimension of the speaking. There is the dimension of the action. There is the dimension of signs, of prophetic gestures and signs. But the prophet is basically one, inspired by the Spirit of God. By being anointed, he comes under the inspiration of God and he speaks God's counsel. And it brings about God's action and shows God's signs. Shout hallelujah. Today I want to leave what we have been doing. Let's break new ground. I want to talk about a prophetic predestination. Prophetic predestination. This is very exciting. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. Prophetic predestination. Everyone that operated either explicitly or implicitly in the scripture as a prophet had had the, the predetermined plan of God over that person. There is no prophet that operates at the, an accidental level. There is no prophet as an accident. Something that just happened by chance. There is no by chance prophet. And while we study the prophetic persons and move of God in the Old and the New Testament, especially in the Old Testament, to help us understand who we are because we are the New Testament. Whatever is written in the few letters or the few writings of the New Testament, they don't say totality, they don't say perfectly everything about the New Testament. We are the unfolding in every generation in, after Christ died, resurrected, and the Holy Ghost came upon the church. In every generation, God is unfolding things, uh, uh, dimensions of the New Testament every day. So we are the New Testament. The books of the New Testament, they give us compass. They give us understanding of who we are. And we are the unfolding. We are the living letters, as Paul would say. We are the living letters, the little, the living epistle, the living writings of the New Testament. So, all of us in the New Testament, what we have been studying is that we are prophetic people, everyone in the New Testament. The Old Testament had cases of prophets in isolation, few individuals who operated in the prophetic dose whom God used to deliver. By a prophet, God delivered. Israel was delivered. And by a prophet, Israel was settled. And Moses, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 16, 17, 18. Let's go into that. 
According to all you desire of the Lord, your God, in order in the day of assembly, saying, let us not hear again the voice of the Lord. Can we look at from verse, maybe 14? Let's look at from verse 14. For these nation, nations which will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the, as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Verse 15. The Lord your God will raise up for you. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear, a prophet like me. So Moses acknowledged himself as a prophet. So he was the only prophet in the midst of hundreds of thousands of people running into million and above that he took from Egypt to the promised land. He was a prophet at some point. God told him, go take, uh, call 70 elders, notable leaders among your people. Bring them to the tent of the meeting. And I would take of some of the spirit that was in you. And I will put it upon them. And they will begin to help you. They will begin to help you. So what actually happened is that God took of the anointing of the prophet, the spirit that was in Moses that he said a prophet like me and he put it upon them and what you will see is that immediately immediately they received the spirit something happened immediately they received the spirit something happened so Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tabernacle. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 20, 25. He placed the same spirit upon the 70 elders. The same spirit that was upon Moses was taken. The spirit upon which keep that scripture the spirit as a result of which he will say that the Lord will raise for yourself a prophet like myself the spirit that enabled him to say he was a prophet he took of that spirit and placed it upon the 70 elders and it happened read it together want to go and come on read it with me want to go and it happened when the spirit rested upon them what happened? That they prophesied. God was telling Moses, I will begin to use them to help you. So I will give you assistance. All of these assistants had to operate in the prophetic. All these assistants had to become prophetized, so to say. They had to come into the the operation of the spirit. All of them. God does not use anybody on earth who does not operate in the prophetic. Whether the person is a king, whether the person is a priest, whether the person is a, pro, a politician or whatever it is, for God to, if it is God working with that person, if it is God working with that person, that person, if it is God operating with that person, I'm not talking about distant using, I'm talking about evident use of God in somebody's life, that God uses somebody, he uses a prophet, he uses a prophet. David was primarily, fundamentally a prophet, was eventually a king, operated as a king. Saul, we saw that Saul, that was anointed to be king, first of all, was a prophet. He had to manifest the prophetic. So the foundation of the spiritual connection with God for the government of the earth is in the prophetic. As we study, you shall understand more and more and more and more. Now today, my interest is to let you know that operating in the prophetic is not accidental. The prophets, the prophetic Mystery is not a mystery that comes by accident. There is something called predestination. 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 Moses himself who said, who said, the Lord will raise up for you a prophet like myself. That Moses was not an accident. 
Moses was a product of a predetermined, a pre-planned, a predetermined programming and arrangement of God. That's what we shall. Let's do, let's look at Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8. And the intention of all of this eventually is to let you know it is a predetermined plan of God for you to operate on earth as a prophet. Every believer it is. Every believer is preordained, predestinated, predestined to operate as prophet. It is not accidental. It is not something that answers to fasting and prayer. So operating in the prophetic is not as a result, is not, is not open to the one who fasts most and prays most. So you see some people thinking if I go to the mountain and stay for 60 days, 90 days on the mountain and come down, I'm qualified to operate as a prophet. That's, that's fallacy. That's spiritual fallacy. It doesn't work that way. It is a pre-arranged mystery. It is a pre-arranged experience from God for those who are in Christ as it was in the Old Testament. The first person that the scripture refers to as prophet in the Bible, the very first person is Abraham. And it was not by accident we have seen how God introduced Abraham to to Abimelech. To Abimelech, right? Abimelech, yes. We see how God introduced Abraham to Abimelech. He said, return that woman's, that return that man's wife, for he is a prophet. That's the first time the word prophet is used to refer to somebody in a true sense. And Abraham is... I study the genealogy of Abraham. Look at the genealogy of Abraham. A few things about Abraham, but there's nothing accidental, of, of accident, of chance about Abraham. Before God will say to Abimelech, return that man's wife, for he's a prophet, God first of all called him, and the Lord said to Abraham, leave. And the Lord now therefore Restore, this is Genesis chapter 20 verse 7 but let's go to Genesis chapter 12 Genesis chapter 12 um, now the Lord has said to Abraham get out of your country Abraham just heard that but that was not the day Abraham was known by God that was the day Abraham had a revelation a contact with God the day God knows you is not the day you came to Christ for every one of you has come to Christ. That's not the day that's not the day you appeared before God. Everything about you in God has been preordained, pre-designed. Everything, details. You are predetermined in God for specific purpose. And the great part of it and the foundation of it is that you will live the life of the prophetic expression you will be inspired by God with utterances with, from God, visions from God, with dreams from God, with knowledge from God, with actions from God, gestures, signs from God, operations from God as a prophet in your own level and in whatever, wherever God plants you. Prophets are not always people with locks and, uh, and um, that live in deserts and are strange. And when they come out, everybody tremb trembles. And in the New Testament, everyone, the prophets are said, everyone shall be a prophet. Glory to God. If the spirit that was taken from Moses and put upon the 70, if he made them before they began to sit down, to counsel people with the Moses before they will begin to sit down, before they began to sit down to govern people and to lead people. The first thing is that they reported themselves as prophets. <laughs> oh, praise God. I say praise God. And the same way that the spirit of Christ, who is the prophet? <laughs> the spirit of the Christ, who is the prophet? The prophet who is the king and priest. The spirit of the Christ that is 
taken from him and put upon us according to the design and preordained will of the father. The first report that this brings about in us is prophesying. Is reporting to situations, reporting to the heavens, reporting to God, reporting to creation that we are God's prophets on earth. That is the pleasure and the luxury of the New Testament. It is not by fasting and prayer. It is by the plan of God for you. Praise God. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. And we know, I pray in the name of Jesus, your eyes are open. Your heart is opened for the capacity of the prophet, which is the operation of the Holy Spirit. Whatever hindrance in your mind stops you from enjoying the privileges, the rights, and the graces of the prophet as a child of God, by this understanding, the veil is taken from you and you begin to enjoy the office of a believer, the office of a priest, of a prophet, and of a king. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you begin to walk in the, in the grace of the prophet speak with the boldness and confidence of the prophet and act with the assurance and the bold and the, with the boldness and the faith of the prophets in the name of jesus christ amen be seated verse 28 and we know that our, we know that god causes all things to work together for good to those who love god let us let us read that in king james version let's look at that in king james version in King James Version, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to what? His purpose. His purpose is government on earth. <laughs> you, don't need to, you don't need to find out what purpose the purpose of our calling is God to rule the world through you and I. To rule the world through you as a parent. To rule the world through you as a wife. Through you as a husband. Through you as a minister. Through you as an architect. As a civil servant. As a politician. As an academician. As a young girl. As single. As married. Whoever you are. That's the, that's the purpose. And if you don't understand that purpose... That it is the government of God. And Jesus Christ says in, in Matthew, in Matthew 6, verse 33, verse 6, first the kingdom, the government, that's the purpose. That's the will of God. Seek first the rulership of God and his righteousness. Why do you seek that first? Because that's number one in the purpose of God. That's why you are called. So when we, we, we often... Make reference to that scripture. Recite the scripture. Quote the scripture. And own the scripture. Use it to, to fight the devil. And fight situations. But we don't understand the key to that scripture. The key to that scripture is not all things work, working together unto good. Unto them that love God. That's not it. The key. Look at that scripture. The key. And we know that all things work together for good unto them that love God. That's half of it. To them, read it. Who are the called, the called according to his purpose. We are dealing with predestination. His purpose had been there before the call. So the call is according to a purpose that is already there. Your being saved is according to the purpose that is already there. So many people will say that everything will work out unto good unto them that love God. Some people don't even go to them that love God. Some people can twist it to say everything will work out unto good unto them that God loves. We can, we can edit the scripture to make us feel good. But it does not bring the result. The result is when it is in spirit and in truth. For God is spirit. We know that in all things, everything working together 
will work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And I say his purpose is government. And I've been telling you that is the purpose of man on earth. That's the purpose of the Christ on earth. From the first Adam to the last Adam. In the mystery of, Christ, of the Christ, of anointing, in ministry, in marriage, in tech, in labor union, in politics. Wherever you are as a child of God, no matter who you are and whatever you are doing on earth, that is part of the fields and the sectors of the earth, the government of God is there. So if you are, you are in organized labor <laughs> union, there's a purpose of God about the work, profitable work, profitable and just work, the work that brings just reward and making sure that people are adequately rewarded for their life. Everywhere you go to, in the creative, that is government, the creative, whatever, in the tech industry, government, in science and technology and innovation, an invention, everything, wherever you go to, is a, a preordained purpose. You are called to be there according to the purpose. So it is by foolishness that scientists will say that there is no God. It is by foolishness. By foolishness. As a child of God, if you are a scientist, you will discover that this is according to the purpose of God for you. The purpose of God for you that in the knowledge of the forces of nature, you will come to appreciate the immensity of divinity. The author of this. Because what science is about is about the discovery of the orderliness of the immensity of nature. That there is nothing is out of nothing is out of place in nature. Everything is so is so together, so in sync, and so purposeful. Nothing is wasted in nature. Nothing is out of place. Nothing is out of place. And so one called as a scientist to study the, the, the forces of nature and the workings of the forces of nature. That is according to the calling of God. It is a, a wonderful way of praising God. You can write wonderful songs from that. You can write, you can, you can speak salvation just from that place. You can preach Christ just from that place. The scripture comes alive in the understanding of the forces of nature. The scripture comes alive. So there is nothing, there is no area of life that is outside the government of God. For he is over all and above all and everything is unto him. So let's continue with that scripture. According to his purpose, which is the purpose of his government. I gave you that scripture. For whom he did, for whom he did for no foreknowledge. The word foreknowledge means knowing beforehand. Let's look at that verse in NIV. It will give you an understanding that is clearer. In NIV, for those God foreknew. That one makes it a little bit. Foreknowledge, foreknew. Those he knew before. Let's get that in New Living Translation. Which is trying to look at foreknowledge. For God, for God knew his people in advance. For those he knew in our advance. Let's look at that in good news. Let's look at that in good news. Those whom God had already chosen, he also set apart. Good news takes it out a little bit out of the context and talked about choice. We are still talking about knowledge. knowledge. Let's go back to King James Version. For those, those he did for no, he also did pre destinate he also predestined to be conformed what was this pressed we will, today we will study predestination predestination but let's let's just say what is this predestination about those he did knew before those he did for no he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image to be the, with the same, to be in, with the same form, to be in the same form, to be in the same form. When we talk about form, the same making, the same life, the same operation of the Son. Keep that scripture. We are trying to talk about to be conform. Conform means be in the same form, be in one form, 
be in the son, same form to the image of his son, to be, to be in the same form as his son, to be in the same, the same arrangement, the same destiny as the son, the same purpose as the son, the same spirit as the son, to conform. When we talk about conforming to something, it means you become one with that thing. That is conform. Transform means to change from what you wear to another. Conform means to move from what you wear into another form. To conform. To move from who you used to be and be part of the form of the son. So the predestination for those that God knew before was to become like the son. To become the son. To be one with the son. This is what predestination is about. Let's look at that in King James Version. We are talking about prophetic predestination. New King James Version rather. New King James Version. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Those he foreknew, he also predestined. To be what? To be conformed to the image. The image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And we know, before we talk about the predestination of the son, or the predestination of those that God knew beforehand, before we talk about this predestination, to be in the same image, to be in the same form, predestined to conform to the image of the son. Who is this son? This son is the one that Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18. Let's go remind ourselves of that scripture again. If you read from verse 15, 16, 17, 18, but let's stay with 18. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. So this is, this is the Christ that is referred to. And will put my words in his mouth. If you look at that scripture, his, his is H is uppercase. That is reference to the fact that the his that is in is in the context is referred to is heavenly his, a prophet from above, or the prophet from above. He shall speak to them all that I commanded him. That's why the first thing about Jesus was not about doing miracles, signs, and wonder. He reluctantly had to change water into wine. And he said, my time has not yet come. The greatest thing was he spoke. When he saw people, he will open his mouth and do what? And speak to them. That's, that's the main prophet. That's the main prophet. That's the main thing about the prophet. Speaking from God. It is because the person speaks from God and of God that the person now acts, does actions that reveal God. Does things that reveal God. Things that reveal God. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services. Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.